Hi, Michelle. Uh, thank you for your questions. Very good questions. So the first one is, since the lower food web is important, would fish be able to survive if the lower food web wasn't there? Uh, no. Um, so the way the food web, web works is that you have these organisms of primary producers. So these are your algae, your plants, things like that, um, that feed each level up and up. But if you were to remove that bottom level, there would be a lack of nutrients or um, energy being put into that system. Um, thus, none of that energy would be able to move up the food web. Uh, so no, they, there would not be any fish um, if the lower food web wasn't there. They wouldn't have anything to eat. Um, even fish that eat other fish that eat, you know, algae or um, plants wouldn't be there because their food source would be gone. Okay, so that's an interesting question. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that these lakes are very big and so changes don't necessarily happen over the scale of like a year or two or they rarely happen in that scale uh, it's more about like the changes that happen over the scale of like decades so one of the big uh, changes in the food web that's happened uh, it's been happening over about the last 20 years is there was an invasive species that came in it's an invasive clam that sort of lives on the bottom of the lakes and they're called quagga mussels. And these quagga mussels, um, they can be present in really, really dense numbers on the bottom of the lakes. And they feed on the phytoplankton that's in the system. And so the phytoplankton forms the base of the food web. So everything that's higher up in the food web uh, relies on this phytoplankton. Well, the quagga mussels are eating phytoplankton, which sort of shrinks the base of the food web. So that means there's less energy available for the larger organisms, things like um, big fish, like the salmon that are out in Lake Michigan. And so sometime in the early 2000s, uh, there was essentially uh, what we would call the collapse of the food web. Uh, this happened most uh, pronounced in Lake Huron, which, mean, which means that basically just all of the organisms, uh, there was a lot of mortality and it, there was a reduction in uh, pretty much every trophic level. So every layer of the food web uh, was reduced. Um, and that's happened, as I said, that was the most pronounced in Lake Huron, uh, but in Lake Michigan, the same sort of things have been, been happening. Um, so one thing that we're worried about with the food web in Lake Michigan is, is there enough food out there in the lake to support uh, the salmon that people like to catch? Um, they like to catch, they like to eat. People will pay a lot of money to go out and catch these salmon. So we need to think about the base of the food web and think about how much phytoplankton or what we call primary productivity is there uh, to support the sport fish in the Great Lakes. And so I would say that that is the, um, the biggest change that we've seen in the food webs uh, of the Great Lakes over the last 20 or so years. Uh, so thanks for the question. Uh, my message would mostly be that small things, worms, uh, insect larvae, snails are very, very important to our environment and very, very important for our research and management of our beautiful resource that is the Great Lakes. We use these individuals to inform managers on how to improve water quality across the region. Um, we use them by extrapolating current water body conditions um, based off of their tolerance to pollution. freshman year of undergraduate uh, studies. So I was uh, well, 19 years old. I never even knew any of this stuff existed. I didn't know I could be a scientist. Uh, I thought that was uh, something way beyond what I could be. Um, they just pulled in my imagination. These things are amazingly uh, intricate and beautiful. Who knew this little worm could be so beautiful or um, 
have such interesting features and play such an important role in our society. I hope that people understand that there's these really interesting and cool things right in their backyard. You don't, you don't need to go to Africa to see a lion to see something remarkable. You don't have to go to Antarctica. You don't have to go to these really far places to see something gorgeous and beautiful and important. It's right in our backyard. <laughs>